Welcome to Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Keeping you informed on faith and family entertainment. Hi, Holly. How you doing? Fine, Isaac. I love our beginning. I love Derek's voice <laughs> announcing our beginning. I have to say that. I just love our beginning. Doing great well, today. In fact, we're talking about a movie that... Um, I, I watched and you have to kind of really be intense because it, it's a di- not intense, but intent on paying attention. It's a different kind of flow in this movie. But what I loved is the story of course, Abraham and his son, Isaac. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that they showed a mature, a mature son who understood that God had this purpose and trusted God himself. Cause you know, how, when you're reading this story, when we're younger, you always think it's like a teenager or a young kid and you feel sorry for him because he yeah. didn't know I was being. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I always, I always thought, well, now, how could he have allowed his dad to do I this? I mean, I, if it was me, I'd have got up and ran or something. And if I was, you know, but I figured, well, maybe he was too young. He didn't know. He couldn't do it. I don't know. But this movie shows that really he also understood and he knew what he was about to do. Right. And he had faith. And there's a scene before we won't spoil it for you because you're going to watch me a bit. But there's a scene before where it kind of he even offers his life for a certain situation and says, yes. then take me. So it showed his spirit was very willing and he was very in tune to God, right. which I appreciated that because it made it even more clear to me. It did. And made, more, made, made more sense as far as the story goes. So I think people are going to really enjoy it. Yeah. And of course, we're going to get to talk to her in a few minutes here uh, to the director, writer, producer. I think he kind of did it all uh, of the movie. I think he did. <laughs> yeah. But first, we're going to start off by checking out the trailer. All right. For what? A trailer for His Only Son. His Only Son. Abraham. Lord. Take now your son and go to the land of Moriah. And there, offer him. The Lord came to me last night. I must go to Moriah and make a sacrifice to him there. Isaac and I will go alone. Why, Isaac? Because the Lord commands it. Make sure no harm comes to our son. The road is a dangerous place, Abraham. The Lord has set us on this path. He will guide us. This road belongs to Abimelech, king of Pelisath. I know who owns this road. I have given your king plenty of tributes. What is your name, old man? Abraham. Why go all this way? Go through all this effort? He has us do this in remembrance. That death is the penalty for sin. You believe that? It's impossible. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? What's your purpose in this? If this is your judgment on me, take my life, not his. Everyone's blind until their eyes are opened. The Lord chose that man out from the wicked that hope may endure. Take me! David, welcome to Faith on Film. Now, before we even get started with anything, though, I just want to say thank you for your service. Uh, As the dad of of a military son, uh, I've, that, that actually went to Iraq and Afghanistan. I have a very special place in my heart for guys like you that basically laid your, lay your lives on the line for us mm-hmm. and for our freedom. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, oh, interestingly you. enough, it was while you were in Iraq that you suddenly developed this strong desire to read the Bible literally for hours and hours. From there, you went on to wanting to basically illustrate those Bible stories in your words, bringing scriptures, mm-hmm. truth, to the pa- from the page to the screen, you went on to produce three short films, and now, of course, his full feature called His Only Son. Can you kind of walk us through that journey? You went from warrior to avid reader to <laughs> film director, producer, writer. Give us give us an insight into that journey. <laughs> yeah, so let's let, real quick before uh, so I don't run into the next commercial break because this could be a long uh, <laughs> this could be a really long discussion. But uh, and actually, so I, I did a lot more than just three short films. Uh, I've done a lot more than actually what you can find online as well. But uh, you only put out the good stuff, at least what you thought was good at the time. But oh, So a little bit of background on me. 
Um, so uh, I, I spent five years in the Marine Corps, got out as a sergeant uh, while I, I was in the Marine Corps. It took me out to Iraq, uh, and I was out there about a decade and a half ago, and that was when the Lord really did a work in my heart. By God's grace, I'd taken my Bible with me. I actually have the Bible right here, and uh, it's been rebound and recovered because it, it I got a lot of wear and tear, but uh, but uh, did a lot of work on, on my heart and uh, showed me the depth of my own sin through the reading of his word and uh, and showed me the truth of the gospel and, and, and Christ's atoning work in his in his mm-hmm. perfect life, his death and his, his burial and his resurrection. Um, and, uh, and, and the gospel came alive to me. The word of God came alive to me. And then I wanted to to during my time in Iraq, I, I thought, man, if I could just show people what I'm seeing, then people would that people would be drawn to the word as well. If they could see these accounts in scripture come alive before their eyes, they, they would be, they would know that these, this is, this is true history. These were real people with real lives and a real God's plan of redemption. Um, and, uh, so after coming back and praying with my wife and, uh, the Lord opened up every door for us to go to San Francisco, uh, to the Academy of Art University. And from that point on, I taught myself how to sew costumes, do visual effects, make little miniatures and, Worked for about a decade doing these little short films until eventually I started his only son about five and a half years ago. So that's uh, try to get that quick for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his only son, um, very different style, you know, and and it because it, it kind of you get into it and the colors and the tones and it's a slower, more intense story. But I'll tell you what you did that I love what you did. Um, and Isaac and I were talking about this earlier. You know, when I was a kid and I read, you know, and he put his son on the altar, I'm thinking, why didn't Isaac fight it? Why didn't he, wasn't he like, no, you know, and no, dad, you can't do this. And who would kill their son? It was so inconceivable. And yet you made it where Isaac approached the, there's a scene earlier where the people approached and he said, well, then take my life instead of the girls. In other words, he was a mature, he understood God, he understood the calling. So it, you really laid out a better depiction, I think, of what that whole sacrifice was about and the story was about with understanding. And thank you for that. It, it made it a completely different come alive story. Well, well, thank you, Miss Holly. I'm glad you picked up on that. And, and I don't really want to take credit for that. What I really try to do is flesh out what the Lord, um, why the Lord had that in the first place, because it was Isaac, at least in this account right here in Genesis 22, the Lord, when he took Abraham out of paganism and set him on a path of, and, and gave him the faith to believe and, 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 and set to make a nation out of him and a line that would eventually lead to Christ, he began to put these memorial stones in his life um, and this is one major memorial stone in his life of of this account of the binding and the laying down of Isaac on Mount Moriah, the same place where 2000 years later, the Lord laid his own son's life down on Mount Moriah. And so to to further flesh that out and put more color on the page of what exactly the Lord was doing and how it does point to Christ it, uh, specifically, and that was the whole purpose of it all. Um, that's what I wanted to do, and so, so hopefully, it accomplishes that, and ultimately points to Christ, because that's the point of it all. It did, and and I'm just comment on the style, because it's it's a slower. I mean, it t- I had to like step back and tone down a little to really get into following how you did it. The dreams, yeah. the sequences, talking to God. Talk about the format. How you guys came up with that. Yeah. So, well, I mean, that's that's from the get go, from the moment that I started writing this five and a half years ago, I really wanted to um, one. It's you're exploring something that it makes for a very meditative film because it's exploring what could have been going on in the mind of Abraham on this three day journey, where in Hebrews 11, it talks about that figuratively he Isaac was already dead and figuratively he was receiving his son back from the dead when the Lord stayed his hand at the end of that three day journey to Mount Moriah. Um, it, it, and so so what had to have been going through Abraham's mind of, 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 of reconciling? I'm going to lay my son down and the Lord has promised to make a nation and ultimately a seed through whom all the nations of the world would be, would be blessed. How do I how do I reconcile the two of that? And ultimately, we know that he believed that the Lord had the power to raise the dead. So by faith, he laid his son down. So how did he come to that? And so it's an exploration of of not only how that that burden had to been carried on that three day walk, but also remembering all the promises of God. Of, of how him and Sarah had to wait for a, a uh, for the child of promise. Now with the with the tone, I think that 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 lends itself to to a to a 
a very emotional and meditative, somber tone, obviously. Um, and I, and it, I, I really, um, as far as the style, try to harken back to some of the old Westerns that you see because it is, I mean, it's a road movie. I mean, you know, they're not in cars or anything. They're, they're taking their donkey across this, yeah. across this dirt path. Um, and so it just, I, uh, even in the, when writing it, when filming it, when I was speaking with the cinematographer and telling him, you know, I want to use long lenses. I mean, this gets into some of the technical stuff, you know, I like long lenses and I like narrow depth of field and, and, and to really, I think that really makes the, the, the space feel really cinematic and really grand. It brings the background, it brings it right up close to the foreground elements. And, um, and then, and then even with the score, um, which I, I think Jordan Wallace, who's my composer, he did just su such a phenomenal job with the score and everything, um, all the creative elements I tried to remind people of is, is this is a film that sort of played with you're, you're in a thousand yard stare. The, the whole time of just Abraham has just got this thousand yard stare sense of being of just trying to try to keep his eyes fixed on the Lord and knowing that the Lord's doing something good in it. But this is an impossibly hard task. Um, but ultimately, you have to come to the, to the sense of is anything too difficult for the Lord, which the Lord said to Abraham in a, and we see that in Genesis 18. But that that principle is echoed throughout the whole film. Yeah. Now, Holly, of course, just brought up the whole creative style. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you mentioned uh, the creative, in essence, the story itself. Uh, and you know what? That, that's kind of the danger sometimes in doing Bible stories is mm -hmm. that you have to get creative in how to tell the story, because technically the Bible story is almost to me like just a, a bullet point. You know, it doesn't mm -hmm. give you all the surroundings. It just kind of gives you the, the you know, what what, what happened. Um, and so a lot of times you, you'll get people that, you know, they're like, wait, that isn't in the Bible. Uh, do you, did you ever worry about that? Because I know you've added things that are not in the Bible, but they obviously probably are things that could have happened to create the, the entire story. Do you ever worry about something like that since you've decided that you're going to do, you know, Bible stories a lot? Absolutely. I mean, that's my heart cry is to illustrate and exposit the biblical narrative through film. And I mean, if someone said, well, you can do you could do the next Superman, which, you know, it's a shame what, what's happening with DC over there. I'm a DC fan. But, <laughs> the, uh, but I mean, you know, you could do the next Superman movie, but you'll never be able to do another biblical film again. I'd be like, OK, I'm done making films. I'm going to go and do what I can to make sure that people get clued into the word of God. That's what I want to do. And that's why I'm, I'm doing films is to show people the truth of of scripture and the truth of the gospel but you're right this is something that you don't play fast and loose with anytime just like anytime you're going into a bible study or even reading the word for yourself you want to prayerfully enter in and understand that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so you go into that with with seeking the lord and 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 and, and seeking his face through the word and then and then guarding and asking him that, he, that you're guarded from error you're guarded from your own pride you're guarded from your own imagination and then as you write that um <laughs> injecting as much as much uh scripture or truth that you find throughout the whole counsel of god throughout all of scripture old and new testament and all the bless you miss holly uh by the way right, sorry. <laughs> and uh the uh uh so you want to you want to inject as much of that into 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 the additional dialogue as you can to where you're not just oh i want this cool creative element everything you want to be able to see okay where can i find this justified how can i justify this from other parts of scripture then once this once the script is finalized i mean once it's once you got the full script then you start putting it before you know sound brothers and sisters that are solid uh doctrinally and solid in their understanding of the word and be like okay check me on this how does this resonate with you is there anything that you see that's in error here um, and then you start to chew it up and flesh it out and you're continuing to pray your way through it through the casting through the filming through the edit through the distribution you know we want to always continue to to keep everything bathed in prayer um, and always seeking the Lord because because this is a prideful business I mean this is like you know it, it's it, when you're trying to do this for the Lord it's every day the vines of pride try to grow around that house and you got to get the weed killer after it you know so mm -hmm. Anyway, long long answer to a short. No, question. that's okay. Oh, I I have a question about um well two casting and location. Mm -hmm. You know um location. Where did you film this and how did you decide on it? Because like you said, it's like a road trip western kind of thing, and mm -hmm. uh, I you know, and the characters. 
Okay, so uh, where we shot it, we shot it all in the greater Los Angeles area. Um, you, so I, you used to live in Temecula, right? Is that didn't you used to live? In I Canada? lived in Orange County by Newport Beach is where I used okay. to live. Isaac okay. lived. Yeah. I, I in, lived in Paris for a while, and then in Moreno Valley, and then in Rialto. So the Inland Empire. Okay, Inland Empire. Okay, mm -hmm. so we shot. Then you guys are at least familiar with the area. We shot a lot of like the huh. Beer Shiva locations, which I mean that's where it is in Israel. It's in the Negev. It's in the south of Israel, uh, which is kind of where we start the film and where the journey begins. We shot most of, of of all of that section in out in the Ridgecrest area, you know, north of Mojave, wow. south of Death Valley. Yes. Um, and wow. then, uh, and then uh, they actually had an earthquake out there in uh, <laughs> actually the week. If you remember, it was Fourth of July, twenty nineteen, and uh, I was actually at the Burbank uh, Holiday and Media Center in Burbank uh, Hotel on the fifteenth floor <laughs> when that earthquake happened, and it locked me in my hotel room. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that Ridgecrest earthquake happened like the week after we shot out there. Uh -huh. So that was the desert locations, and then as they journey up into the hill country of uh, of Israel. Um, you know, where you uh, was Canaan at the time, but as they make their way up into Hebron and then up into what's what's now Jerusalem, um, we we went to uh, Bronson Canyon Caves, which is right beneath the Hollywood sign. Yes. which is a very historic Hollywood location where so many westerns and stuff and sci-fi films have been shot. And then Malibu Creek State Park is a big location that we shot out there, which is really cool because it's actually a shot in the movie where uh and you actually see it in the first teaser trailer as well where where the the, the where abraham isaac and the two servants are walking across this field and they have this like green ridge line behind them that's actually the exact same location where in the first planet of the apes with charlton heston when they're when they're running and they have the the apes that are first coming on horseback and they're running through the cornfields that's the same film where that, that's the same field where that was filmed oh my cool. gosh um, i love knowing that that is so cool yeah Holly. it was so cool we were way off on that because we thought you had shot it in like morocco or egypt yes. I don't know, something <laughs> Like he must have been in that you know climate because it looks so real. Wow, wow. that's so cool to know that. Especially the yeah, all the greater Los Angeles area and the whole casting situation. That was just all the hand of the Lord in that as well. An answer to prayer. I mean, we cast Sarah pretty pretty quick right away. She was an in in person audition in Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. funny story, just to tell you how long how long it's been to get this film out there. We actually were casting in L.A. the exact same week in the fall of 2018 that Dallas Jenkins was casting the first season of the chosen. So that's no. like, his only son. if you think like that seems like eons ago, but, uh, but anyway, so we cast Sarah right away. We cast Eshkelon, which is one of the characters, one of the names I get to one of the servants servants. Um, and then, uh, cast a number of the other, uh, supporting roles. And then, uh, but the casting of Abraham, and man, that is just a story wow. of the Lord's hand at work. I don't know if you've heard anything about that, but that was just, um, I mean, he, we had over 1,700 applicants um, applied to the to the role of Abraham. And I was doing all the casting myself, building all the casting breakdowns through Breakdown and Services, wow. LA Casting, SF Casting, you know, backstage, and, um, and, uh, and couldn't find anybody to fit the bill. And then finally, my producing partner, Roman Medinoff, comes in uh, to, to, to the office one day, and he's like, Look, if we don't have this thing cast this week, we're gonna have to push the film. Okay. And so I immediately started praying, like, Lord, you know the real Abraham. You know who he is now. You know who you've declared to pr to play him. Lead me to this right person. And so I start going on IMDb, just looking at Middle Eastern actors, just like <laughs> you know, and, and, and click their star rating and go like, okay, let me roll down here and and be like, I like this guy's face. I like this guy's face. Eventually, I I, I sent uh, I sent Roman six names. And I said, "Hey, can you give me reads from these six guys?" And then, uh, and then he gets uh, he he sends off the email request. And the next day, we get Nicola Mowat, who plays uh, Abraham in the film. He emails back, and he's like, "No, oh, I'd love to. I would love to read for this. I would love to do this." He said, "I read my Bible every day." And he's like, it "Turns out he's this huge. He's like one of the biggest TV stars in the Middle East, and he, he's a, he's a Christian in Lebanon." And um, and so wow. he sends he sends his phone audition. And it's still I still have it. And it's like so cool to look at because it was a very um, heart wrenching scene that he was reading. And it was exactly as I pictured it when I wrote the script. It was like I mean, I'm talking like even even the pauses between the words and the oh, intonation David. of his speech and even the mannerisms was perfect. And then he's like. I said, cast him immediately. And I jumped on a phone call with him and he's like, you know, he's like for a long time, he said, I asked a, a, a director friend that I have from Paris and I asked him, you know, 
how do I get more international work? And, and, and he said, well, you have to have an IMDb page. And he's like, well, what is an IMDb page? <laughs> he's like, so, so I, I procrastinated and I procrastinated and I procrastinated. Then finally, I, I made an IMDb page. And the next day, Roman emails me and, and asked me to read for this movie. And I'm like, wow, you could just see that like everything was being orchestrated right on time. And just like how long it's taken to get this film done and watching the success of the chosen grow, which we started at the same time. Yeah. Now to see full circle. Yes. Full circle. Yeah. Like now you see so like an Easter theatrical release. This couldn't be more perfect timing. It's just what the so Lord's God. doing in the nation, in the world now. So God and so yeah. God instructed. And that 11th hour thing, when you, it's the pressure yeah. of you got to do it, you got to do it. And in that 11th hour, God brought you that, which yeah. is exactly what he well, wanted. It, it's yeah. the story that. of Abraham, right? At the 11th hour, he it actually is. at 1159, Amen. he provided the, uh, the, the sacrifice. 1159 in 59 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've been a delight, David. And I hope people, where can they see this movie as far as, is it going to be online? Is it going to be streamed? Do you know? Well, so first we, we're taking it the, uh, theatrical, uh, March 31st, 2023, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it'll be across the U.S. and in many foreign territories. And from that point on, depending upon how long the theatrical is, not sure yet, but eventually, yes, it will be DVD. It will be, um, uh, you know, Blu-ray and it will be streamed on, uh, you know, Angel Studios is the distributor putting it out. So it'll obviously be on their right. app. And I'm sure it'll be over many other platforms as well. And I'm glad you said 2023 because uh, people sometimes may be able to watch this show two three years from now and uh, it'll be it'll be it'll not be in the theaters anymore but you certainly yeah. can find it streaming somewhere I'm sure it'll be going around for a long time uh, yeah. so what's next for you you got what's a couple of minutes left yeah well we got my heart cry is to is to like I said is to bring scripture's truth from the page to the screen and so I want to continue okay. to do this chronologically through the Old Testament if if that's what the Lord wills for for my life that's that's my desire in my heart and if it's the desire of his heart then then I want to walk in that and so it, I want to continue to work my way chronologically through the Old Testament and uh, right. we're currently uh, talking angel and, and and I are currently talking about the next one right now and that will be announced soon or um, maybe when this broadcast it may have already been announced <laughs> uh, but we'll see you know how his only son does and to see if the lord opens up the opportunity right. to do another one because i and, want to do this for the rest of my life and maybe do a limited series or something but david next time don't wait like five years to bring it out let's do it a little <laughs> faster okay come on bring it out so we do these amazing films you know yeah. so how can people follow you just to stay connected and know what you're doing next or know more about this movie well, David Helling on Facebook, I've got a like page on there, and at David Helling on Instagram okay. uh, will get you uh, that you follow me, and I'll try to start posting more often. <laughs> All righty. You were a delight, David. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Holly. Thank you, Mr. Isaac. I appreciate y'all having me on. It's a blessing. God bless everything you do. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, I'm Karen Kingsbury, number one New York Times bestselling author and the author of A Thousand Tomorrows. And I'm Tyler Russell, screenwriter of A Thousand Tomorrows. And you are watching, watching Faith, Faith on Film. film. You know, Holly, it's so exciting to see these Christian movies that are coming out theatrically. In fact, have you noticed that there's actually a lot there? Here, there's, here's a word I've been wanting to use. There is a plethora of Christian movies. <laughs> <laughs> you like that word? I've been plethora. wanting to use that. There's a plethora of Christian movies that have been coming out theatrically even. I mean, we've, of course, we're, we're talking about His Only Son. Uh, there's, of course, the biggest one right now is the Jesus Revolution. There's one that I saw last week uh, that was actually produced by a church, very well done, called Southern Gospel. I uh, saw that too. Oh, I it was that fantastic. Movie. There's next month. There's going to be the George Foreman story. That that is actually a faith based story. Big George Foreman. Big, Big George, George Foreman. Foreman. And then there was one. And and by the way, we're going to get to interview some of these folks from these movies. There's one called Nefarious, which is. A rather scary movie. It deals with demon possession, but there's there's a lot of these movies uh, that have been coming out. And I, that's exciting to me. Yeah, I I didn't think Nefarious was scary as much as just like like wow that could happen. I mean, a, that's person, what, a demon, that's a demon could a possess thing. a person, and then it's like then you're talking a whole. I mean, mm. but I just want to say it's not like a, a thriller. You know, no, it's not a horror movie. There's no, no violence movie. in it. Yeah. 
Because Nefarious is kind of a, I think, a name that, you know, you think it's going to be this evil, you know, kind of horror film kind of thing. I was like, how can a Christian make that? Right. But it's it's an interesting surprise. Hey, going back on Jesus Revolution, I just want mm-hmm. let you know that there is a pastor here in Texas who loved the movie because he was converted during that time. He became a Christian out of that 70s wow. that Jesus, Jesus Revolution. Mm-hmm. And he rented a theater and bought tickets for the whole theater so anyone could come free. Isn't that a great idea for that pastors is, to do? That is fantastic. I think pastors uh, around the country uh, should, should start to do that if they haven't already. I mean, what a great idea for pastors to get the word out and say, you mm-hmm. can come for free. You want to share the story. And I wish yep. more would do that. But I I mean, some of them rent it out, but you have to pay. But to give it for free. Wow. That, yeah. That's a lot. But yeah, we've got some good, good films. And it encourages me, Isaac, that so many Christians now are making films. Because it used to be a few would come out, one or two, you know, and you'd, wow, that's great. But a lot of people couldn't afford it. But whatever's right. happening, God is funding people because there are a lot of films coming out. And it's exciting to see this. And, and actually, I'm encouraged to see it. We need good stories. We need good f- stories of faith and good films right now. But I'm sure Hollywood is also producing some wonderful family-oriented movies, aren't they? Well, <laughs> Well, they are, and then they aren't. Okay, folks, Shazam is out right now, PG-13, and Uh if you haven't seen it, go online, watch the trailer. Yes, I love Zachary Levi. Yes, I love who he is, and I love the fact that this story is about family and family coming together and supporting each other and everyone being involved to make a difference and make changes, and I love it. Only thing I didn't love was there's language in it, and there's creatures that if you've got a five- and a six-year-old, I would be scared of that. They're ugly, demonic-looking creatures that come up out of the ground. They're taking people and throwing against buildings and stomping them. And so, you know, there is death. They just don't have a bloody death. Hmm. The thing that offended me the most, I think, is at the very end when you watch the credits and they have the first, you know, trailer kind of clip. And at the very, very end, they have the last one. The character says God's name in vain twice. The last word of the film is God's name in vain. And I, there wasn't many people left in there because who's going to stay in there with your parents and your kids? Who's, what parents going to keep your kids through the credits? Mm-hmm. So they know that the kids won't, but they know that the teens and the adults mm-hmm. will. And I was so offended. I thought, why did you put this into a kids, in, you know, a, a young people's movie? It's about kids and family. So I yeah. just, oh, I just get so mad when Hollywood does that for no reason. No reason. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think we're going to have to do an entire show just talking about all these Hollywood movies that uh, that you've seen uh, yes. and, and can bring us some kind of uh, Christian perspective on them so people will know whether they should choose that movie because they have to do what? They have to choose their movies wisely. That's right. Absolutely. Well, well, we've run out of time. And by the way, I just got to let you know that that's my son, by the way. You you mentioned the voiceover at the beginning I of the show. I love it. And now you'll hear it at the end. That's that's my son. I, I just Yay, to, Derek. We I love your voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Holly. Well, take care. And, we'll and see you next week. And he's, yeah. and he's available for bookings, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yes, he is. As a matter of fact, he is. And he, it was but good he told, to you. But he told, me to hurry, he, told me, he told me to hurry up because he's booking fast. He's booking fast. Uh, until next week, guys. God bless. Bye-bye. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.